Let's not go on with the bit. The lady just came in and she wants to see you. Mm -hmm. Right now. Where? Thanks, Mother. I ought to get a commission. Mother, you have my undying gratitude and affection. I ought to get a commission. You wanted to see me? I'm Peter Gunn. How do you do, Mr. Gunn? Please sit down. My name is Maria de Cara. I'm happy to know you, Mr. Carl. And I, you. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Gunn. Really? What have you heard? Well, enough to want me to entrust you with something very important to me. Suppose you tell me about it. Well, I came here from Mexico almost three years ago with my brother Manuel against our family wishes. I was going to be a great dancer. Manuel, an artist. Our dreams, I am afraid, haven't quite turned out. Well, dreams have a way of doing that sometimes. Manuel was proud and sensitive. He was too proud to go to Mexico and admit failure, to go back where he belonged where he lived, where he was understood. And now? And now? Manuel is going home now. Too late. Too late? Yes. My brother is dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Carl. I can't go home with him. My father blames me for Manuel's death. <laughs> I have no home there, and there's nothing left. <laughs> what is it you want me to do, Mr. Carr? I have saved some money. There's $2,000 here on the plane ticket to Mexico City. I want you to take Manuel home. Well, it isn't necessary to have someone accompany your brother, Mr. Carr. I'm sure you can make arrangements with the airline. I have investigated. You see, the death certificate must be taken to the Mexican consulate. Then a courier is supposed to obtain a, a removal certificate from the health department at the airport in Mexico City. Well, do you have a death certificate? Y yes. Why did you come to me with this, Mr. Cara? Oh, I needed someone I could trust. If you don't do this for me, Mr. Carr, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Well, I haven't said that I wouldn't. Where in Mexico City is he to be taken? Well, my father, Ramon de Cara, will meet you at the airport. He's made arrangements for the burial. You'll turn over the papers and the... everything to him. That's all? There's a plane leaving at midnight. I'll leave that ticket. Boy, I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Gunn. Good night, Mr. Gunn. Good night. speaking to you. Why? The way you looked at that girl. Mr. Cara is merely a client. You weren't looking at her as though she were a client. Well, she has a problem. Many more clients like that, and I'll have a problem. Eat. Hmm? What does she want? She wants me to go to Mexico. 
You going? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is she going with you? No. Well, that's some improvement. I thought you'd like him. I'd like it better if you didn't go. Business. You're sure? Very sure. I wish I had your confidence. Look, I, uh, I have to catch a midnight plane. I hope you miss it. I will if I don't start packing. What can I do to delay you? You're doing it. I'm glad. And I'm late. Look, I'll see you when I get back, huh? Well, Ole. What do you mean, Ole? I don't know. It's something they say at bullfights. Well, we're not at a bullfight. Oh, it could be if you take me with you. Maybe next time. Look, I'll uh, bring you back as a rabbi, hmm? Watch your language. I'd like to confirm my return space, Peter Gunn. Senor Gunn, I heard you paged our customs. I am Felix Montero, secretary to Senor Ramon de Cara. I'm glad to know you. I trust you had no difficulty. Everything was in order. Senor de Cara is waiting at gate number three. Fine. I'll just check with the freight agent, and I'll meet you at gate three with the casket. Gracias. Thank you. Gunn. Mexican Federal Police. Will you come with me, please? <laughs> Mr. Gunn, I am Captain Oriega. How do you do, Captain? It was nice of you to come. Well, it's uh, nice of you to put it that way. Please sit down. Thank you. Eso es todo, Guevara. I suppose I should say bienvenido. Meaning? Welcome to Mexico. Well, is this the usual welcome? No, not exactly. But then you're not the usual traveler. I'm not. Are you on your way to a funeral, Mr. Gunn? No. Well, you're certainly admirably equipped for one. You have a casket and a body. Who's the deceased, Mr. Gunn? Manuel de Cara. Oh. May I see the dead certificate, please? Where are you taking the body, Mr. Gunn? Well, I was about to deliver it to the deceased's father, Ramon de Cara. Where is he? Probably still at the airport, wondering what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you have to forgive our precautions, Mr. Gunn. People come to Mexico. We have to know who they are and the nature of the business. I hope we haven't inconvenienced you too much. I really hope you enjoy your visit here. Thank you, Captain. Mr. Gunn. What did the police want, Mr. Gunn? They just wanted to wish me bienvenido. I noticed the officer approach you at the airport. You should have interceded. I could have used a good word. The point is we're here and at your service. May I present Senor Ramon de Cara? Senor de Cara, mucho gusto. Senor, I'm confused. As I was about to deliver your son's body to you, I was picked up by the police. Instead of your coming to the police station to put in a word for me, I find you waiting outside. I offer you my apologies, Senor Gunn. I fear in my bereavement I have acted illogically and... If you don't mind, I will take the claim check and... I left it with the police, Captain. But why would you do that? For safekeeping. A person never knows what might happen in a strange city. That is true, senor. A person is liable to find himself in considerable trouble. Oye, para aquí.
Frame check, Senor Gunn. Ask the police. Senor Dakara? I'd like to be alone in there for a few minutes. Uh, yo, solo, in there. Uh, cinco momentos. I, too, am interested as to what is in this casket. As a matter of fact, I'm very interested. Who hired you to bring this casket into Mexico? A very attractive young lady who could cry on cue. She called herself Maria de Cara. Had you seen this girl before? No. You mean to tell me you were willing to deliver a casket across the international line from a perfectly strange young girl? I liked her story. I don't like yours. You don't think I stole this money? Mr. Gunn, here's what I guess to be almost a million dollars. I believe the American expression is you don't have a lot working for you. Well, I've been in better spots. But on the other hand... Let's get to the other hand. There was an armed truck robbery in the States. The take was over a million dollars. Word came to us that the money was being transferred here. We have been on the lookout for it. Now that you've found it? You have logic on your side, Mr. Gunn. If you had stolen the money, I don't believe you would have put it in the casket and transported it here. You would have hired someone to do it for you, just as someone apparently hired you. I like your deductions. This is a fairly well-conceived plan, Mr. Gunn. I like to find out who's behind it. Well, now, uh, maybe we could work something out, Captain. How was that, Mr. Gunn? That is, if I'm free from suspicion. Reasonably free. We could remove the money and leave the casket. And? Well, I'm sure that someone is very anxious to get their hands on this money. And that someone would contact you? If I made myself available. Do you believe you'll be located? I don't think there's any doubt of it. Neither do I, Mr. Gunn. Neither do I.
man to find, Mr. Gunn. You found me. We won't take each other's time, Mr. Gunn. We won't? Look, Senora, unless you deliver that claim check, we're quite prepared to kill you. The claim check, Mr. Gunn? Señor de Cara, gracias and buenas noches. you will be good enough to explain. Explain what, Senor de Cara? Why did you deliver to us an empty casket? Well, after I saw what was in the casket, I thought we'd better have another talk. We are talking. I'm not in the habit of transporting stolen goods. Your tense is inaccurate, Senor. You have already transported stolen goods. Which should entitle me to consideration. What sort of consideration? $100,000. <laughs> Senor Gunn, do you realize your life is in considerable danger? Might be. If I didn't have a million dollar life insurance policy. <laughs> you drive a difficult bargain. It was a long plane ride, Mr. Cara. Are you prepared to take us to the money? If we can reach an agreement, a hundred thousand dollars. It is agreed. My associates will accompany you. I think they'd better accompany me unarmed. After I deliver the money, someone might get the idea of trying to kill me. <laughs> it is a commendable idea, Mr. Gunn, but under the circumstances, I don't think it would be practical. I'd like to think of it that way. Very well. You will go with Mr. Gunn, unarmed. Why not? No! Llévenselos! Senorita, you handled that beautifully. Have you been here all the time? Uh-huh. I just wanted to see some good old American know-how. Please. I wouldn't be much good at a bullfight. Well, why not? Because I'd be for the bull. Really? Unless... Unless what? 
You happen to be the matador. Well, not a chance. You'd never get me in a bull ring. Mm -hmm. I can't get you around rings, period. Look, uh, why don't you look at the pictures? I've seen the pictures. Well, listen to the music. I'd rather talk. You would? There now. You've managed to change the subject again. Well, we can uh, talk about it tomorrow. When? Manana. Are you in your education? Well, what's wrong with my education? Well, you can get out of trouble in six different languages.